Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Donna from AxTheRadTech.com and I help you go from the classroom to the extra room with ease. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the things that you can do in order to take better x-rays like right off the bat, things that you can implement, things that you can totally like put in in order to get better at taking x-rays. So let's get into those things. This is a fairly quick one. If you want to see the blog version of this post, like you want to save it and share it, or I just want to share the video, the links will be there in the description bar below. I'm in need of an x -ray. X -ray, x -ray, x -ray. I just came off from my night shift. I'm so tired, but you know, here I am. <laughs> so yeah, the first thing, you need to know your equipment, okay? Different hospitals use different equipment. Um, extra department in one place might use GE, the next place might use Simons or Siemens, depending on, up to this day, I'm not sure how that is pronounced. Um, somewhere else might use, I don't know, like the Conoco Minolta, um, CR reader, and the, like the processor another place might use agfa that kind of thing you know so you need to be familiar with the equipment that the hospital that you're at uses especially if you're a student and you go at different sites all the time you would need to be familiar with your equipment in case you know little minor issues happen you know how to fix it um of course we do expect that you would like know the entire unit and the inside and also how to fix every problem but just little quirks and stuff because sometimes different equipment have their little issues or the little special thing about them that would set them apart from others so know your equipment take the time to familiarize yourself especially if you're a student and you're going to be working at that site for quite some time the next thing you need to do is learn from your mistakes learn from your errors mistakes are normal we are human beings we make mistakes all the time um ever so often however you know this is x-ray this is radiation we don't want to keep repeating the same mistake and radiating our patients over and over and over just to get the image that we need okay so it's very important that you learn from your mistakes you know how to correct your errors so that when you do the x-ray again you wouldn't have to worry about hmm i wonder if i'll get it this time you know you already saw the previous x-ray and you know what you need to work on i actually have a blog on this how to like things to consider when you're repeating x-rays um i plan to do a video on it as well but i will leave that blog post in the description bar below as well for you all to check out and if you'll check the blog you'll get the information first you know because that video will be coming out in a timing right <laughs> so yes next thing that you would want to do is to create a general routine as radiographers we all have our little routine the way that we do things sometimes we prioritize certain images over the other so for example you wouldn't want to move from doing like let's just say a patient came in with multiple trauma and they have a skull to do they have a chest to do they have tip fib like the leg lower limb they have a hand they have a l spine you don't want to put them like go necessarily go in the order that is written on the card because they might be moving from a rack bucky to table top to in um to the table bucky you know you don't want to just be moving skipping all over the place like you might want to prioritize your table procedures first or your erect bucky procedures first so it's all up to you as well as in general like have a routine so you know that you might have the patient registered you might have a csr to do that for you or you'll register your patient select the protocols at the workstation you would set up your cassettes put your marker set your exposures and then you might want to call in the patient you know so you do what works for you if you know the patient has to change you might want to like bring them in the room a little sooner while you set up because they could be changing their clothes in the meantime so it's all up to you to create a routine that works but if it's one thing each radiographer has their own routine some are similar but some people like to do things in a way that works for them when you create a great routine you're able to work around things a bit better and the flow of your examinations go by so much faster than it would if you didn't have things in place already also you want to make mental or physical notes of exposure factors 
different patients are different they have different sizes some patients um, are more gracious than others in terms of size um, some cases might be different different views have different proceed like different um, exposures and stuff like that so make a mental note memorize and familiarize yourself with the different sizes and what exposure you might use for them and well if you're not so good with that yet or you're just starting out or you're still new in the program you can write down your notes and keep it with you there's no shame in not memorizing exposures for the entire body as a student you know of course coming down to the end of the program i would say that you should be pretty secure in what exposure you should use for your patients however nothing wrong with having some notes sometimes there are cases that we aren't not necessarily familiar with but cases we don't do often so it will be good in that case to have it written down in case you need to check and the last thing that you need to do in order to take better x-rays is to not rush don't rush okay you know that song don't, don't rush, rush. Right, that song. Don't rush, okay? When you rush, you tend to take away from other parts of the examination, such as patient care. You know, you're no longer as calm and, and, and considerate and caring as you could have been if you weren't rushing, right? Because you're just telling them to do this quick and get the patient out. When in reality, sometimes the patients just, they're not going to be in the room forever anyway. So, yes, you want to move quickly, but at the same time, consider your patient care. And don't let your anatomic positioning be, you know, affected because of the rushing. Make sure you position properly. If you have to take an extra few seconds to just check over your positioning before you expose, do that because at least you wouldn't have to give more radiation and does not follow the LR principle which is as low as reasonably achievable you know so you do with that as you will just try and take these things into consideration and i am 100 percent sure you will be ready and taking way better x-rays than you ever had and these things affect your patient care the anatomy positioning and all of that so and it helps make the flow easier so you get to focus on the things that matters and take better x-rays okay so that's it for this topic thank you so much for watching and don't forget to check out my previous videos in my last video i went into x-ray production as simplified as possible explanation on how x-rays are produced you know how the x-ray tube works in the video before that i actually went into the types of fractures and their classifications with x-ray examples so don't forget to check that out as well and in the previous video i went into mas and density explain the simplified version when i do these radiographic principle topics i try to make the explanations as simple as possible but at the same time don't leave out the important terms and you know just explain it a bit more so that when you have to explain it to your lecturer or to anybody else you're able to do so quite easily so thank you so much again for watching this video and i will see you in the next one bye